would you like to go for your walk? Hello, my name is Isabella and I am a rising senior at Hollins University in Roanoke, Virginia. I am a Roanoke, Virginia native. I'm majoring in biology and minoring in chemistry. I am a pre-med student aspiring to be a surgeon someday. And I'm also currently volunteering as an EMT at a local fire station. What I wanted to get on here and share today is that I was diagnosed with Fragile X syndrome, which is a genetic disorder. So there are two reasons why I wanted to make this video. Number one, those who aren't close to me have no idea what's been happening in my life, so they're not going to know that I have Fragile X. So I wanted to let everybody know what's going on. And number two, the most important reason why I wanted to make this video is to help other people that are in my shoes. Because being of Generation Z, the first thing I did was go to YouTube when I found out that I had Fragile X. And I wanted to, I was hoping to find a story of inspiration, a story that would give me some hope that things were going to be okay, and um, some just some information on it. I was looking for anything on Fragile X, and there's very little out there about it. So that is why I'm posting this video and making this video. I want to help people who are in my shoes and looking for some information and some hope. So Fragile X is a genetic disorder that is X-linked dominant, that is its mode of inheritance. So what are the implications of having Fragile X permutation? This is really affecting my reproductive health. Based on my AMH number being so low, my doctor has told me that I was the youngest person she has ever seen in ovarian failure. And if I wanted any chance of having a biological child of my own, then I needed to have an egg retrieval done ASAP. That's a lot to handle. This is not something that most 21 year olds go through. I have the ovaries of a woman in her mid 40s, early 50s, and I'm only 21. Uh, so my ovarian reserve is very low. I do not have a lot of eggs at all. So how did I find out about Fragile X? Fragile X has definitely been the main topic in my household for most of 2021. I was actually diagnosed because my father was first diagnosed with Fragile X in the beginning of 2021. So I like to say I got Fragile X for my 21st birthday. You know, you deal with the information, you process it, and you try to, to move forward and think, what can I do next? What can I do to help my chances of having a healthy child in the future? Because I am a pre-med student, I really feel like it's important that I understand it because I'm a science person and, and I understand biology and I understand genetics, so why not try to understand my own genetic disorder? So here are some statistics about Fragile X. One in 260 women have the premutation of Fragile X. That's, that's a fair amount, and for something that I never heard about before, that's a pretty, pretty significant number of women who do have Fragile X, and some of them don't even know that they have the premutation. I have a 17% chance of developing FAXPOI, which is Fragile X pre-ovarian insufficiency, and just unfortunately, even though it was 17% chance of getting it, I have FAXPOI. Having FAXPOI also means that I will likely hit menopause 10 years earlier than a normal woman would. But thankfully, thankfully, you can carry a child post-menopause. I'm someone who grew up not really knowing if I wanted children or not. And uh, then when I turned probably 19 or 20, it's like, I don't know, I woke up one day and it was all of a sudden like, baby, 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 I think I'd like to have a baby someday. So it's just kind of like a maternal instinct that kicks in for people and that definitely happened for me. So because I'm having all of these fragile X issues, it's one of those instances where you want something and because you know it's going to be harder for you to get it, you'll want it even more. Because I was able to get such great discounts on my medications, I'm hoping to be able to do another egg retrieval just because I know how few eggs I'm projected to get. I'd love to be able to do another egg retrieval, but we'll just evaluate that once I see how many eggs I did get from this first egg retrieval that is coming up in August. Getting on the list for the egg retrieval was extremely stressful. I found out 
my status and that I needed to have the egg retrieval done immediately. So knowing that that number of slots open was very low, I was trying to get all the paperwork done, get everything done that I can. I did apply for discounts on medications and I was able to get those discounts. Just to put it in perspective, medications for an egg retrieval can cost up to $10,000. That is just the medications that are the injections two weeks prior to the egg retrieval. So that puts into perspective, that doesn't even count the retrieval itself. My retrieval is set to be done in August of 2021. So next month, this is July. I'm excited about it. I'm nervous, uh, but I think what's helped me is that I am a medical person and I know how things work. And so I, I, I kind of know what to expect. But also, on the other hand, I have no idea what to expect because I haven't done this before. So I've really, really been trying to educate myself on this. During those two weeks of injections, I'll be going every day to every other day for ultrasounds and blood work. And one of the important hormones that they'll be checking is my estradiol level during that blood work. Um, but the ultrasounds are to check in on my follicular growth. So I have recently had some events transpire in my life that have unfortunately made the egg retrieval feel like it's going to be a cakewalk. So I've really, really been trying to not stress about the egg retrieval because I know that stress impacts the body in so many ways and will decrease my egg count. It's just how it works. So I'm trying to just pray about it, be positive, have the best outlook that I can, hope for as many eggs as I can, just hope for the best because that's all I can do at this point. I'm starting injections in a couple weeks. So I'm trying to get my body in the right place and trying to get my mind in the right place. Thank you all for tuning in for those of you who have listened. And I hope that this was informative to those out there who had never heard of Fragile X or just wanted to learn more about it. I hope that this video has helped somebody. Thank you to everyone who has supported me. I am very grateful for those who have been there to support me. I'm very grateful that this is not a diagnosis of a terminal illness. I, I realize that, but this is still pretty big. So thank you once again, and I'll see you soon.